The IG series of droids were terrifying. Let's talk about why that is. So, the IG droids were manufactured by Holowen Laboratories, which was a subdivision of the larger Holowen Corporation. However, it was not Holowen Laboratories who came up with the original designs for the IG droids. That was a different company called Flute Design Systems. So, the following is how Holowen came to acquire these droid designs and blueprints from Flute Design Systems. So, you see, Flute Design Systems, or PDS for short, took out a huge loan from the intergalactic banking client to begin production of their droids, which they planned on selling to the Trade Federation. But unfortunately for PDS, Things did not go as planned. The droids they wanted to create ended up being too expensive and their profits too low. This eventually led to Fluid Design Systems going bankrupt. And because of that, they could not repair the loan to the Intergalactic Banking Clan, which resulted in the Intergalactic Banking Clan seizing all of the assets of the Fluid Design Systems company. So after the Banking Clan seized all of Fluid Design Systems assets, they sold Fluid Design Systems droid plans to Holovan Laboratories and that's how Holowen came to acquire these plans. They did not create them, they were sold to them. So the first IG droid to be manufactured was the IG Lancer droid. These droids were created by Holowen for use in the Banking Clan's droid army. In case you're wondering why the Banking Clan needed an army, well this army's purpose was mainly to protect the assets owned by the Banking Clan, which were a lot, and also to help them collect their debts. The Banking Clan was serious about their debt collection. So anyways, at first these IG Lancer droids were used by the Banking Clan, but later, in roughly 22 BBY, when the Clone Wars broke out, the Lancer droids were incorporated into the Separatist droid army. And this right here is what the Lancer droids look like. Apparently, they were designed to mimic the stature of their immune creators. The Munes, in case you didn't know, were the species that mostly controlled the banking clan. Also, Darth Plagueis, Darth Sidious' master, was also immune. His non-Sith name was Higo Damask, by the way. So anyways, after the enormous success of their ID Lancer droids, Holowan was granted a contract for the creation of bodyguard droids to specifically serve the higher ranking members of the Separatist army, for example, General Grievous. So to fulfill this contract, Holowan developed the IG-100 Magna Guard. You might remember these droids from Revenge of the Sith because these are the droids seen protecting General Grievous when Anakin and Obi-Wan tried to rescue the Chancellor from General Grievous. Holowan also tried creating a droid to replace the battle droids entirely. And the result of this endeavor was the IG-86 Sentinel droid. These droids, while being extremely effective, were not successful in replacing the battle droids, possibly due to them being more expensive. So instead of being a replacement for the battle droids, the IG-86 Sentinel droids were used mainly by the banking clan for its various requirements, and also by a lot of third-party individuals, mainly smugglers and criminals. An example of one such third-party user would be Cad Bane, who had an IG-86 in his crew. So those are pretty much all the droids Holowen developed during the Republic era, and after the Empire came into power, there was a ban on creating assassin droids. And all the droids that Holowen developed could be categorized as assassin droids. So to circumvent this ban, Holowen rebranded their assassin droids as security droids. And apparently the Empire didn't care, they just let them keep making droids. So, coming off of their massive success in the Clone Wars, Holowan started development on a new series of droids. And the first droid that Holowan developed during the time of the Empire was the IG RM droid. So, this is what the IG RM droid looked like. And apparently, it was designed with the purpose of looking as scary and menacing as possible. So, did it work? Anyways, the RM droid found a huge market among criminals and all sorts of scumbags in the galaxy. And due to these droids being mostly used by criminals, they gained the nickname of Thug Droids. Okay, so, so far, all the droids that Holowan developed were pretty successful, but the next one is their best work, the IG-88, nicknamed Flutoids after Flute Design Systems. So the IG-88 series were made up of five identical droids, and these droids are special because as soon as they were activated, they immediately killed the people who made them, destroyed the lab, killed the guards, and escaped Holoman Laboratories. So yeah, I didn't mean best work as in best for their business. Now, in canon, there really isn't an explanation for why the droids did this, but in Legends, there is. So you see, assassin droids in Star Wars, in general, had a problem. They would sometimes turn on their own masters. This was due to the way they were programmed, but Holowan said they could rectify this, and it is with this intention that they created the IG-88 series of droids. 
Apparently, Holwen believed that their superior programming will be able to rectify this defect in assassin droids. And also, ID-88s were created with Holwen's special sentience programming, and it is this sentience programming that caused the problems. Also, in Legends there were only 4 ID-88s instead of 5. So, as soon as they activated one of these ID-88s, it immediately figured out that it was an assassin droid and came to the assessment that technological life was superior to biological life. The researchers said Holovan figured this out and they tried to turn the droid off and this is what caused it to kill everyone. And as soon as it escaped, it copied itself onto the three other IG-88s model and together these droids killed everyone at the lab and escaped. The story goes on in Legends. Apparently the main goal of the IG-88s were to start a droid revolution and destroy all of biological life in the galaxy. Eventually, of course, all the droids were destroyed in Legends, but at one point, one of these IG-88s managed to upload its consciousness onto the second Death Star, and it planned on using the Death Star to annihilate all of biological life. But before it could do that, the Rebels destroyed the second Death Star and saved pretty much the galaxy. So if the Rebels had not destroyed the second Death Star, Palpatine would not have been their biggest concern. But anyways, all that is Legends. In canon, the droids were created, they killed their makers, escaped, and three of the five droids ended up becoming bounty hunters. These three bounty hunting IG-88 droids were IG-88D, IG-88C, and the most famous of the three, IG-88B. So IG-88B, often referred to as simply IG-88, became a freed bounty hunter and was even hired by Darth Vader to go capture the Millennium Falcon. This is him in Empire Strikes Back. So suffice to say, while the IG-88s were not a success for Hollow One, they did become quite notorious for their capabilities as bounty hunters. Okay, so other than all the droids we've mentioned so far, Holloway did create some more random models, and I will now go over them as well. So the BK-86 was another model of security droids that Holloway developed. They were used by this being to protect his antiquities business on the planet of Batu in the Outer Rim. Then we have the IG-70, another security droid model created by Holloway. One of these IG-70s was used by a criminal on Lothal, you may have seen him. And then we have the model IG-90. So one of the IG-90s was also into bounty hunting and this is that IG-90 right here. He was hired by Darth Vader along with a bunch of other bounty hunters to track down Dr. Aphra. Now that deserves a video of its own so I'm not gonna go into detail on Dr. Aphra here. And then finally we have the droid model IG-11. So if you've seen the Mandalorian you might be familiar with the IG-11. In the show, we see an IG-11 which has been programmed to follow the protocols of the Bounty Hunters Guild. Then, on a bounty hunting mission, him and Din Djarin teamed up, and the bounty ended up being Grogu, the force-sensitive 50-year-old baby. The bounty was dead or alive, so IG-11 tried to kill Grogu, which did not sit too well with Din Djarin who shot him in the head. Then IG-11 was repaired and reprogrammed by Quill to become a nursing droid, and then the droid sacrifices itself to protect its friends, then it was turned into a statue. Then Din Djarin tried to revive it, and you probably know by now how that went. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, do consider subscribing and stay hydrated. Have a nice day.